Hello YouTube, uh, tonight we're going to start the series on uh, bug out. Um, bug out bag is the first thing all preppers should have and uh, that is uh, going to be tomorrow night's video or next week's video. Tonight we're going to do the first thing I put on and my first level of preps. The first thing you should purchase is a bug out bag and all the gear that goes with it. Uh, as you get into prepping then comes the vest. But the vest is the first thing I put on and it's my first level of preparedness and that is why I will demonstrate the vest tonight and why uh, I have put it number one. Uh, if you've been at prepping a long time, I think you'll enjoy these videos. If you are new at prepping, I think you'll absolutely have a great time uh, and hopefully as much fun as I have making it. But anyway, tonight, let's begin. Forgive the video quality. Again, I'm using the webcam. It's just easier to upload and faster. Uh, but anyway, let's have a good time. Here we go. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is that uh, um, I have on a tactical vest, all right? Uh, okay, now, why would I put my tactical vest before my bug out? Well, you're about to discover why as we get into this video. But the first thing that I think about when I think about bug out is this. If we don't survive, nothing we've done matters, does it? If we don't survive, nothing we've done matters, does it? All our preps are for naught if we're dead. So the first priority of bug out should be to survive. Okay, let us begin. All right, if you'll notice, I have pouches up front and everything, but what do I have right here? My, my secondary weapon, simple nine millimeter, okay? If I'm driving a car, right? Boom, it's right there, it's accessible, right? Okay, it's just a simple nine, as you can see. Nothing fancy. All right, that's there. All right, second, my first level of protection, obviously, if I'm on foot, is my standard AR. As you can see, this has been cleared, uh, and it is not loaded. Okay, um, but it has a standard herring, carrying handle, uh, so it's, it's pointed towards the ground while you're walking. That's one neat feature about the standard AR sight and all that. I now have one that is uh, <coughs> where my red dots, since I'm getting older and all that. This is now my tertiary weapon, but I thought I'd use it for tonight. Uh, as a demo, uh, just a basic AR weapon. Uh, you know what I mean? So now I'm, I'm ready to bug out. I can bug out. I've got a primary and a secondary weapon, okay? I put this down in the seat next to me, and I've got my uh, secondary weapon all ready to go, okay? So that's first. Okay, we have to protect ourselves. We have to live. If we don't live, none of our preps matter, right? Okay, now, what else is a tactical vest? What's the neat things about a tactical vest? Well, let's have some fun with this. And why I preach tactical vest. you got to have one. Okay, um, well, let's begin. First up here, you may notice that I have my more knives. I have a two dual pack. Uh, they connect to each other. Um, that's one thing that I've got up here. Uh, but the first thing that we need in survival mode is what? Water. Okay, so if you'll notice here, I have, and none of this is open because this is a bag I'm building with another person uh, to train them how to prep their gear and all that. Uh, if you'll notice, it's the Sawyer. Uh, in the back here is the plunger. Uh, and uh, you can also use that to irrigate wounds and so forth. That. Uh, that syringe there, but it's made to backwash your Sawyer filter. These things are awesome. They last for a long time. Uh, I think 100,000 gallons uh, for this particular filter. It has the bag in it and all that. When this is out of the box, it fits right in this compartment up here where normally your shotgun shells go. Okay, that's where your Sawyer filter goes. All right, now if you'll notice, up here I have 9 millimeter magazine pouches. I only will be loading two pouches on my tactical vest. That means I have 30 rounds in here and I have 15 rounds in the weapon. Okay, that's 45 9 millimeter rounds. Uh, down here I have three AR M16 or AR15 magazine pouches. Okay, uh, I will only carry again two magazines. That leaves me the other two pockets to load other gear in. Uh, but that gives me 40 rounds on my vest and it gives me 20 rounds in the weapon itself. That's 60 rounds. That's 105 rounds that I'm carrying on me during my bug out for personal protection and hunting and anything else that may come up. Okay, now from there, 
Okay, what's next? We've covered protection. We've covered water. Next is fire, okay? And uh, I never discount the handy dandy Zippo lighter, okay? A lot of people overlook this simple tried and true item that's been around forever and survivalists absolutely love. A can of fluid, some extra flints that don't take up hardly any space at all in a small fire kit. This thing will last me six months to a year in the field to start fires with, with very little effort. Now we always have backups to backups. That's why I have the friendly Swedes. Uh, look at the stoutness of those ferro rods, okay? Look how stout those ferro rods are, folks. Um, those are some of the most stout ferro rods you're going to be able to buy. And the Friendly Swede actually has a great purchase price uh, for this stuff. Uh, very inexpensive, yet a high quality product. Um, and what do I use for a striker? I use my Mora, you know, the back of my Mora blade. That's what I use for the striker. Grind down your Mora blades a little bit, and you've got yourself a great little high carbon steel striker on your ferro rod. Anyway, um, so now we've got two levels of fire starting, okay, and we become experienced with that. We train, we learn how to use our tools, and there we can start fires. Now we've got protection, we've got water, we've got fire. Now we need to work on our shelter. Well, remember my magazine pouches. What did I also have in there? Ooh, look at this. A hundred feet of paracord sitting right in a magazine pouch. Isn't that something, okay? Now, you don't have to carry all this on you. Uh, you can, it fits nicely in your uh, magazine pouch, but you can cut off 25, 50 feet of that, put it in a smaller pouch if you wish, somewhere, and uh, put the rest in your bug out bag. Uh, but you're going to need paracord, right? Okay, um, the next thing you're going to need, obviously, is uh, with this, uh, in order to make shelter, uh, you don't just need your paracord, but if you had paracord and a tarp, most of you could make a temporary quick shelter, right? And you can build a fire. You can stay warm with a lean-to out of a tarp and paracord, okay? Uh, if you don't know that, look up bushcrafting online. You'll figure it out quite quickly. All right, but uh, I like to build a little bit intense temporary shelter, so I want a handsaw, and this is a simple camp handsaw. Uh, most of you have probably seen them if you've done any camping. That's how simple it is. Fits right in my pocket. And uh, very lightweight, easy to carry, and uh, I also can sharpen this if I have to later on. Uh, what else do I carry on this? Uh, look at that, a hatchet. All right, make sure you have a blade cover on your hatchet, but it's also a hammer. Hey, if I carve me some steaks, I can pound them right in the ground, can I? Nice, so we've got ourselves a hatchet too, and that allows me to show you this belt. Okay, this belt, believe it or not, on it has two handles. Okay, so if I have to pull somebody out of something, this belt becomes useful. And the reason why I'm leaving it loose is so you see that I can take it off the vest. Yet, when it's fully on the vest and locked on me, somebody can pick me up or drag me by this. Or I can use it as part of a harness getup to uh, be laid out of somewhere. Anyway, there's a multitude of uses for a tactical vest. Uh, don't go buying a super cheap one. But this one here only costs, uh, I think, 60 bucks. Very expensive, yet super, super strong, well built. I mean, the webbing on this is incredible. And it's got the armor plate carriers, both two in the front and one major one in the back. And people will say, well, where's that tarp going, Jim? This goes in your armor carrier pouch inside the back of the thing. If you'll notice, this will fit right on my back. It fits right in the armor plate pouch in the back of this vest. Okay, so now. We have just covered everything we need for protection, water, fire, and shelter, okay? Now, what else do we need, all right? We're going to need to keep our tools sharp. If you've ever been in the field, you want your knives sharp, okay? This big stone goes in the bug out bag. The little stone, okay, goes on the vest. But what else do we have? We have to have backups to backups for something as important as sharpening, right? So, uh, this right here is uh, this is a blade sharpener. This is a saw blade sharpener, so you can get in on the little teeth, sharpen those up, right? And then also, this has coarse and fine uh, drag sharpeners right there, okay? See how they cross? Quick find to keep my moras in tune every day 
uh, with hardly any time. Just keep them cleaned up, if you will. You know what I mean? Not really sharpen them. Okay, and if you'll notice, uh, my moras, I have two of them. This is the stouter, bigger brother of the mora. This is what I use for all my batoning and stuff and the heavy work. This blade here. Uh, this is my survival knife that I absolutely must have to do all my jobs in the field. You can baton with this little one as well, um, but I have two because I like something as important as a survival knife, backups on backups. But anyway, now you can see why I preach the tactical vest. Not just because of protection in a bug out situation, driving, walking, whatever, because I have everything now covered for me to survive should I have to leave everything else behind in my vehicle and my bug out bag, whether it be a fire, an assault, uh, whatever, I can leave all that stuff behind and still survive just by what I'm packing on me, okay? And that's what's important. Remember, vehicles fail, ambushes can take place, roadblocks will happen, uh, many things can take place in our bug out vehicle and ruin our plans, okay? So think that through. Know that, and that's why I say with the tactical vest. As you can see, with everything that I've packed on this vest, and that's nothing, when we finish this series, you'll be absolutely amazed at what I have on this vest. Uh, it's almost macgyver -ish. But anyway, not important. What's important is you've just seen I've got protection, I've got water, I've got fire, and I've got shelter. Okay? Add a little fishing line, a fish trap, uh, which is easy to make out of some fish line and some hook, and you know that's lightweight and easy to stow. You've got your ability to fish. You know how to forage for food. You know how to hunt. You know how to trap. Food isn't an issue. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time worrying about food. Well, guess what? We can stand to lose a few pounds for a couple of weeks until we get settled in somewhere. So, food isn't that important. What's important is water, fire, shelter, and protection. Those are the important things. That's why I say the tactical vest. We can lose our food, but we can't lose our ability to get water. We can't lose our ability to provide shelter. We can't lose our ability to provide fire, heat, and warmth. Okay? These things we must have. And obviously, we must protect ourselves. If we don't live, nothing we've prepared for matters. Does that make sense to everybody? Again, if we don't live, nothing we've done matters. Does that make sense? So that's why I start with the tactical vest. It is the first thing I put on. My bug out bag goes over it. Now, uh, last but not least in this little get up is my compass. Should my vehicle be uh, ambushed or whatever and I have to bail out, I have a silver compass here, uh, metal casing, uh, very similar to the military lensatic compass. Okay, almost the exact same thing. Uh, works quite well. Not very expensive, but I can shoot my back azimuth as soon as I leave my vehicle and my azimuth. And from then on, I can track in and out of the woods and stay on course towards my bug out location even if it's 20 miles away. Uh, so learning a little bit about na land navigation would be important as well for bug out. That's my opinion. Um, again, all of this is up to you. Uh, you can take what you want. You can leave the rest. But I hope you now all understand why old Jim says get yourself a tactical vest. They're not a lot of money. And yet, they are absolutely incredible pieces of gear when properly packed. Uh, you saw how much I had on it. Everything that a bushcraft survivalist would need to survive is on this pack, and then some. Okay, and you'll see as we go down packing our bug out bag, how we've got backups to backups, how we get more gear in this vest. Okay, and I uh, just wanted to share all that. Um, I hope this has been fun and refreshing. I hope. Those of you who didn't think about how uh, potent a tactical vest could be, it's not a show-off toy. It really is the first level of survival in my bug-out plan. Everything I need to survive is on this vest at all times so that I can flee should I have to. In any situation, that means even leaving my bug-out bag behind and still survive in the wilderness. And that's what's most important. To give ourselves chances, no matter what the scenario that is presented is, we have the ability to survive. You know, if I die, then I die and nothing matters anyway. So the first thing, in my opinion, should be to protect ourselves and be able to survive in any scenario. Otherwise, all the prepping we've done matters not. Anyway, uh, just me to you, experience, strength, and hope. This is the way I do it. Uh, Jim out.